Hey everybody, I wanted to give you a couple of quick encouragements on the subject of prayer. We were just talking about this in our study through Daniel 10 this past Sunday, and I want to give you two things that you should always remember when you go to the Lord in prayer. Two things that I believe are going to help encourage you to pray when you're wondering if your prayers are going to make any type of difference. If we go back to chapter 3 of the book of Daniel, we find this famous interaction between Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the king. The king has set up this giant gold statue and is demanding that everybody bow down and worship it. But these three guys aren't going to get with the program. They're not going to compromise their faith. And in verses 17 and 18, it says that they said to the king, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. I love it. It's such a great response in the face of adversity, staring down death. So the first thing I want us to notice is that they say God is able to save them. There is no doubt in their minds about the ableness of the God that they serve. And I want to remind you of the same truth. Whatever situation you're praying about, wherever it is that you are longing to see God move in your life, there's no power issue. God is able. He's able. And that alone should motivate us to pray and ask the Lord for his help because he's able. There's nothing that is impossible for him. And then we see the second wonderful ingredient from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They tell the king, listen, but if God doesn't decide to save us from the fiery furnace, the issue is not that he's not able. He might just decide not to do that. And even if he doesn't rescue us from the furnace, we still won't bow down and worship the idol. So what is the second ingredient? Where does that conviction and peace come from? They have incredible faith that their God is able, but they're also okay with the fact that their God might not rescue them. I believe it's because they were absolutely convinced that their God loved them. He loved them, which means in their minds, if their God didn't rescue them from the fiery furnace, he had a good reason for doing so, even if they didn't know what it was, and that God was ultimately going to do what was best for them. And I want you to know that you can be sure of that same thing. Your Heavenly Father loves you, and everything He does is for your good, and is what is best for you. So pray with faith and with confidence because God is able, but also pray with faith and confidence because God loves you. And even if your prayer doesn't get answered, you can trust that God heard it, and he didn't respond the way you asked him to because he knows more than you know and is doing something better that you can't see or understand just yet. The two things that should motivate us to pray is the fact that God is able, he's powerful enough to help, and that we can absolutely be sure that he loves us. And if we ever doubt that, we need only cast our eyes to the cross where the Son of God, Jesus Christ, laid down his life for us because he loves us. God is able and God loves you. So pray with confidence, being sure of those two things. God bless you guys. I love you. And we'll talk to you soon.